special attention was paid to making sure decal machine works as seamlessly with other Blender add-ons as possible. And I want to thank the authors of those add-ons, for doing their part in this as well. First, there is Group Pro. Decal scenes can quickly grow in complexity due to object count alone. And Group Pro is a massive help, in dealing with, and staying in control of those scenes. If you group a selection of objects using Group Pro, it essentially turns them into a single object. For the curious, it's actually an empty, drawing a collection, using a Blender feature called Collection Instances. What matters is, an assembly of an arbitrary number of objects, can be manipulated like a single object. The beauty is, you can still manipulate the objects in the group if you want. And you can even add decals when you are editing a group, and they will become part of that group automatically. The way you are supposed to mirror groups, is by using the flip selection tool. And this generally works great. Just not for decals unfortunately. That's because it works by scaling negatively, which then messes with decal normals and parallax, and it also flips the decal UVs, making typographic elements unreadable. So, instead of flipping groups with decals, what you can do instead is, mirror them first using mirror mods. I'm doing it very quickly using machine tools here, which then also enables the UV mirror for decals. If you then group those objects afterwards, Group Pro will keep those modifiers working, by including the object you've mirrored across, in the group. The result is great. Decal normals look as they should, and info decals can still be read. If you don't want to include the object you are mirroring across in the group, you can do that as well. Watch the machine tools section at the end of this video for that. Once you have created a group, you can also dissolve it again. But watch what happens to the decals in regards to the collections. It's easy to fix, by just toggling the collection settings in the decal machine panel, to force a new sorting. Alternatively, you can also use decal machine's own group dissolve tool, which does the sorting automatically. Furthermore, if you ungroup this, watch the cubes and spheres names, which are cube 2 and cube 3 accordingly, after the dissolve. But if you undo, you can see they used to be called cube and cube 1. That's because Group Pro duplicates objects when dissolving a group, to make sure other groups referencing those same objects stay intact. You can use Decal Machine's Dissolve Op with the Alt key pressed, to return the original objects, instead of duplicates. Just be aware, that if you have instanced groups, while the normal dissolve will work fine, Dissolve with Alt pressed, will invalidate the instanced groups. Next up, there is Hard Ops. Hard Ops was a major reason I switched to Blender, so naturally, I want Decal Machine to work well with it. Both add-ons complement each other very well, and target different areas of the hard surface workflow. There's really only one thing you should be aware of, and that is, if you have decals going across edges with a live bevel modifier. You can project and slice those beveled objects easily. This second one is shrinkwrapped by the way. But if you change the bevel radius, projected and sliced decals need to be fixed manually. Shrinkwrapped decals generally hold up very well, but it's still a good idea to snap them back to the surface. Projected and sliced decals will need to be reprojected and resliced. A new addition in Hard Ops is the ability of its material menu, to hide materials named with a leading dot. I've explained in the adjust video, how Decal Machine hides its materials by default, because they can quickly clutter your lists, and because you rarely assign or tweak them by hand anyway. This setting is now taken into account, when using the Hard Ops material menu as well. It can be toggled directly in the menu too. Finally, if you like working in full screen, and need to access a decals modifier stack, the best way to do that, is via the new Hard Ops helper. Next is Batch Ops, which is simply indispensable. For instance, it's very easy to disable all mirror modifiers, scattered on various objects throughout a scene, using Batch Ops. Or alternatively, select all the objects, that use a certain modifier or material. 
but as mentioned before, decal materials have a tendency to clutter your scene, which is why they are hidden by default, by naming them with a leading dot. I'm happy to say that Batch Ops now supports this feature, which helps tremendously. You can of course turn it off at any time, but I don't recommend it. All of these are decal materials, literally drowning out every other material. And with that number of them, Blender slows down as well, at least for as long as it is busy generating all the material icons. With Batch Ops installed, Decal Machine will allow you to hide decal collections as well. It works exactly the same as for materials, and so Batch Ops supports it too. You can hide the decal type collections, as well as the decal parent collections. Selecting objects of a collection is just a single click with Batch Ops, and you can do a lot more than that. Finally, Machine Tools, which with its Pi menus, is like an interface layer on top of Blender, as well as a collection of useful smaller tools. New in Blender 2.80 is the ability to show object outlines, which is almost like it was made for decal machines specifically. You can quickly toggle these outlines in Machine Tools Shading Pi. You can also draw objects by a user-defined object color. And with Machine Tools you can set object colors randomly, from collections, including decal collections. You can choose to colorize decals based on their decal type collections. That way, all simple decals will be the same color, and all subset decals will be another color, etc. In addition, you can colorize decals based on their parent collections. So all decals of objects in one collection will share a color, while decals of objects in another collection will be assigned a different one. The Modes Pi in Machine Tools now supports Group Pro as well. This means, instead of using Group Pro's Pi menu, you can access the main Group Pro tools using the Tab key, and interact with groups in a very similar way to how you interact with other objects. The Group Dissolve button will also use Decal Machine's Dissolve operator, if Decal Machine is installed. There's also a brand new Collections Pi in Machine Tools. You can select objects of a collection, as well as objects in child collections, like decals. And you can also subtract selections using the Alt key. With Decal Machine installed, you will be shown the Decal box on the right. Which allows you to directly select decals by type, or decals in certain decal parent collections. Moreover, if you have Batch Ops installed, you will be shown those small buttons on the right for every collection. They are in fact the very same one, Batch Ops lists in its own panels. And with these, you can do things like, isolating, or deleting collections. For every group you create using Group Pro, a collection will be created as well. And while these collections are not linked to the scene, they are still present in the blend file, and Batch Ops will display them. Unless you hide them using machine tools. And in a more complex scene, like Alexander's Strikebreaker, you can see how the Collections Pi supports up to 10 collections. Using this and Batch Ops, a lot can be done, without ever leaving full screen. In addition to the Pies, I want to point out a few tools, that can be very useful when working with decals. Depending on your zoom level and distance from decals, you may see shading artifacts like these. The object surface shows through the decal, even though the decal is in front of it. You can fix this by adjusting the view's clip start value. And the quickest way to do that, is by using machine tools clipping toggle, which is mapped to a key and cycles through three adjustable values. There is no perfect clip start value. What you need, depends on how close you are to your object or geometry. The value also influences how close Blender's Frame Selected tool will bring you to your selection. 
if you want to mirror decals, I recommend using the mirror tool in Machine Tools, which, with a single key press, sets up a mirror modifier, flips the decal UVs and makes sure the normal transfer mod is at the end of the stack. There's also a very useful unmirror tool that removes the last mirror mod in the stack. The mirror tool also supports mirroring existing group pro groups. And instead of adding the object you're mirroring across to the group, it instead creates an empty in its place. You can unmirror that as well. One of the newest additions to machine tools is the mesh cut tool. It does a knife intersect, but from object mode. In previous decal machine versions, there was a similar tool called Material Cut. But since it's not directly related to decals, but more of a general modeling tool, and a simple one, it's now part of machine tools. Finally, if you have an object with child objects parented, as decals are, and you try to apply the scale or rotation, this is what will happen. It doesn't adjust the child transformations or modifier parameters to compensate. But Machine Tools Apply Transformations tool does. As for modifiers, only the bevel mod is supported right now. And that's it for now. The add-ons mentioned in this video are linked in the decal machine preferences about section, as well as in the video description. I can't recommend them enough.